early Sunday morning as members of the security forces and residents clashed. It stemmed from an incident Saturday night which left two young men dead and several others in hospital, nursing injuries. Our reporter Dwayne Anderson was on the scene and now reports. This is the motor car at the center of the incident that has sparked anger in Hayes Clarendon. Police say the vehicle was traveling along the Hayes Main Road sometime after 8 p.m. Saturday when it was signaled to stop. But the driver ignored the commands, sped off, and managed to elude the police. The police say the next time officers saw the motor car, it had already crashed into a light post in another community. They went to assist the persons on the ground. In doing so, persons close to the crash unit fired at the police um, team that came on location. They returned fire thereafter. As to whether or not those persons were in the vehicle, we are not in a position to say if they were traveling in the vehicle. Superintendent Christopher Phillips added that the police are probing whether the police were shot at by criminals who had located the crash site before the officers and were attempting to rob the crash victims. But relatives and residents have their own theories. They believe 17-year-old John O. Blair and 20-year-old Kevon Solomon's deaths were caused by the police. The legal picnic that we had is the one place. Legal picnic them. Jamaica was judged it. We had to wall this now. I don't even know them because they're not even smoke. They don't smoke. Panda in a youth club over here. Care package. Panda the funny vehicle with them and give out it. Persons are saying that the police um, team, you know, shoot up the vehicle, all of those things. Those are not true. This has been the scene along the Hayes Main Road for almost all of Sunday morning. Commuters unable to traverse the main road because residents mounted roadblocks to demand justice for the deaths of two members of the community. They are demanding a speedy investigation into the matter. No, but we are trying our best to have the area cleared and we will try and meet with the people and to see if we can bring a quick resolve to the, to the incident. It is reported that nine people were in the car at the time of the incident. Some were treated at hospital and released, while others have been admitted for their injuries. In the meantime, an autopsy is to be done to determine how the two young men died. The police say at this stage there is no indication that any of the young men died of gunshot wounds and their head wounds are more consistent with crash injuries. The matter is being probed by the Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom. Indicom was on location. Um, last night and so we are now in the process of doing a thorough investigation but from all indication there are clear signs of lawlessness and if the persons had complied with the police you know maybe would have had a situation where we saved those persons. Um, I learned also that the persons who succumbed are actually persons who work with the police who are um, part of the police youth club so we know these persons, these are persons who we work with. We, we know that they were coming from a grave digging. Dwayne Anderson, TVJ News. And Battle Central Westmoreland Member of Parliament, George Wright, has stated his intention to remain in the constituency and run in the next general election. After months of being at the center of controversy, Mr. Wright finally broke his silence in an interview with the Gleaner on Friday. Kalisha Williams has that story. Jamaicans have been waiting with bated breath for this man, Central Westmoreland Member of Parliament George Wright, to address the country after a video surfaced in April showing a man beating a woman with a stool. Now, after months of being tight-lipped, Mr. Wright has spoken, but he stayed clear of the one topic that people are most interested in. All people come first, right? And... Uh... I don't support the, 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 the use of abuse to anyone, whether woman, man, boy, girl, I don't know. Even animal. The police could not link Mr. Wright to the video, and so the investigation ended. However, just over a week ago, he resigned from the Jamaica Labour Party and is now an independent member of parliament. 
But there has been public outcry for him to resign from representational politics. Now, speaking with the Gleaners' Mark Titus, Mr. Wright refused to yield to pressure for him to pack up and go. I don't really have much comment to say and, and, and lose. I don't really have much to say. Just that, you know, I am one of um, those persons who want to see, you know, a well-developed constituency and, you know, and we, we'll be working with the people. But what's his relationship with the constituents now, especially the women? Well, you know, um, with, with, with the, you mean, in the whole controversy? Yes. I, I wouldn't comment on that one, right? I wouldn't comment. Just last Tuesday, Mr. Wright shocked Gordon House when he returned to the House of Representatives two weeks before his leave of absence expired. So what's his plan now? Mr. Wright went as far as indicating that he'll be putting himself forward to represent the people of Central Westmoreland in the next general election. I've been working over the years and the people know that I'm... Um, easily reach so they will still um, connect with me wherever i go kalisha williams tvj news the killing of a teen and the injuring of another man on third street in trenchdown st andrew last evening has sparked calls by the councillor for the area for tough measures from the security forces our reporter kirk wright was in the area and filed this report the teen, Damoya Hall, was seen as a promising young woman who wanted to become a fashion designer and was well on her way to fulfilling that dream. But that dream died Sunday night when her family got the news that she had passed in the hospital. Earlier, Damoya was at her grandmother's yard washing dishes. Now, here's where 16-year-old Damoya Hall was when she was shot yesterday. About 6 p.m., gunmen entered her yard, started firing. She was shot in the head. And now that she has passed, the entire community is infuriated. The teen passed while being treated in hospital. At daybreak, her family and concerned residents came out to vent. We're tired. We're tired. We're tired. We're tired. We're tired. We're tired. The sad news had the teen's mother stunned for hours. She was closely watched by relatives who themselves were still in shock. They say the teen was shot in open view of many people by someone she knew very well. To back up their story, the residents showed us a picture with the teen and the accused, which was taken a year ago at her birthday party. The police have since listed three people as persons of interest in relation to the deadly shooting. They are Kima Roach, Kima Tingle, otherwise called Not Nice, and a man known only as CJ. The mother of Kima Tingle, or Not Nice, has since come out in his defense. To the distance where the local girl dead, my son can't go up there, so. If him go up there, so he can't come back alive. May I tell you the honest truth. The Member of Parliament, Mark Golding, acknowledges the police presence in the community, but says... Despite the posting of police at the end of the road and some barriers and what have you, there's no real effective policing taking place. But I think they have to have a strong presence on the ground. It can't just be that they're stationed at one point and don't patrol. There must be a strong presence of police on the ground and, well, security generally, police and soldiers. And the, and the persons who they know are the violence producers, they need to find a way of getting those persons off the street. His counsellor, Never Wright, is preaching the same message, but was a little more direct. Mr. Wright says, while he wants justice for all, the situation in Trenchtown now requires harsh measures, even if it means temporary suspension of certain rights. Once you have a weapon for you, that's it. If you have it, you have an intention to do something. Right? Shoot them. If you have it, once you find it with it, that's it. He says the human rights group need to understand the reality of the people 
who are exposed to violence daily. It will be good for the human rights people who have a head in the come to come live on Third Street and face reality. And shortly before midday, in the middle of the grief, we heard explosions, followed by the news that a man was shot on Fourth Street. The residents have accused the police of doing that shooting. But at the time we spoke to the police on the scene, they say it was too early to state how the man was shot. Kirk Wright, TVJ News. Jamaicans were among migrants detained in Florida this morning. They were caught after the boat they were sailing in crashed on the boardwalk. The details from WPLG in Florida. One by one, our cameras were rolling as at least 16 migrants were taken into custody Thursday morning. This handcuffed migrant explaining why he made the trip from Jamaica to the Bahamas and then to Pompano Beach. We are killing going over here. Really want to leave. Want a better, want a better yeah, life. No life is in Jamaica right now. Since May of this year, Coast Guard officials tell us there have been 483 migrant interdictions. Broward Sheriff deputies say around 8:45. They, along with federal agents, responded to a call of a boat carrying migrants, which came ashore along Southeast 28th Avenue and Atlantic Boulevard. I was just woken up this morning by uh, sirens and choppers. Sky 10 was above, showing the boat after it went crashing into a seawall. David Dubé captured this cell phone video of the boat. Just coming real slow, zigging and zagging. You can tell it was... Something wasn't right. Those who live nearby tell us that after crashing, the migrants made a run for it, hiding out in a nearby construction site and empty homes.